Well hello it's Cliff here from Down Under and this video I'm going to go into using your digital readout on your lathe using the tool and work offsets to very quickly set up and machine parts much more quickly than traditional methods you're almost using your manual lathe like a CNC lathe and if you don't have a digital readout and quick change tool post then this might be the information you need to justify buying one to your better half. Alrighty, cheers. In this video I'm going to outline how you can use your center lathe with your digital readout using work and tool offsets and machine parts very quickly and efficiently and use your lathe much like a CNC lathe I'm just checking most of you are aware of how to fully utilize your digital readout. Um, it has a huge powerful capacity if you use it for setting your work and tool offsets. For example, if you put in the absolute first stage setting um, DRO display, put in a master tool, set it on the end of the work and set the diameter, the end of the work on Z0, Z0 and then each tool that you subsequently set up you allocate a tool number tool number one tool number two the boring bar you know parting tool threading tool and that way when you come to machine the parts all the tool offsets have been set and you can quickly machine them to the numbers on the DRO very much more quickly than the old traditional way of machining that's using your manual lathe like a CNC lathe with tool and work offsets and you can machine the part twice as quickly. It takes a little while to get your head around utilizing it that way, but I really encourage you to do that if you're not already, thinking in terms of the end of the part being Z0 and uh, all the different tools having a relative tool offset and a relative number really helps you speed up machining and minimizes the chance of you ever making a mistake. Okay, I'll go through machining this part through the different stages using tool allocation number digital readout or tool offset use of digital readout. It's all different names you can use. So I've got one, two, three, four, five, six different tools. And the first one is the absolute tool for setting the work offset, establishing uh, with this tool the end of the part and the diameter and then all the other tools are attached to it in the software according to the number that you choose they're all moved like a family so if you put a new piece of stock in here and it's further out then you reset that and that sets the work offset and then all the other tools are shifted to that new position you can probably see that's a huge saving of time in setting each tool. Obviously it requires having an accurate quick change tool post with tool holders and that you make sure there's no chips or dirt under the tool holders. The quick wipe with a rag can do that. Um, so tool number one, uh, sorry, the, the master tool is the standard turning tool. Then I've got a grooving tool, a rough boring tool, a finished boring tool, T4 for putting in the center, T5 for the threading. I'll go through it and you'll see it in operation. You can have the top side set round at an angle, but it's important to remember to return it to the same position. You can do that by turning it until it is approximately flush on the end or to a mark and going to zero on the dial. Then effectively, you're not using the top slide and messing up your positional setting. So for example here I've got the absolute master tool in, I've faced the end and set the diameter 0 on the end, 39.9 for the diameter. Now I'll put in the next tool, say an undercut tool, call that tool number 1. And then we just look at our little sketch and say okay the undercut is indexed in 18 millimeters on the Z and down to a depth of 38.6 and you just go straight in and machine it. 
So we index in 18 millimeters and go to 38.6. And we've done our undercut and you can see that's quite a saving initially but if you have to make multiple parts it's a huge saving horrible teary steel okay so now we put in the next tool and set up the tool offsets for tool number two which will be the threading tool so each time you put in a new jaw a new part or a new piece of stock you set the master tool, in this case it's called ALE on the Sino Digital readout, to the end of the stock and enter zero and that shuffles all of the tool offsets to this new position of this new part or stock in its lengthways position in the chuck. And then I can just put on a cut 39.9 diameter. Then I just set it to the spec on the drawing 39.9, put the cut on Go to the Z position of 17 millimeters. And we've machined that. Now I can go to the next tool, which is a grooving tool. Check there's no chips on the tool post mating surfaces. Enter tool number one index along to the position which is going to be 17 millimeters and go into depth I'm just sort of simulating it here I probably need to concentrate on the actual job myself but you can see I can plug the tools in select the tool number machine to the uh, finished size and do a machining operation much more quickly uh, than you would normally do it by the old-fashioned turning method. If you like, you could say this is using new CNC technology with the new generation of digital readouts to use a, a manual lathe, sort of half like a CNC lathe, and save a lot of time. I think it's really good to think of your uh, different tools in this way. It means when you, if you want to upgrade to a CNC machine eventually, um, the step is a lot smaller because you're already thinking about it in that way. Um, it's not quite as accurate as turning a turret on, a, on an accurate CNC lathe, um, but most tools you find are not actually high precision finishing tools, they're grooving tools or they're uh, roughing tools and so on. Um, and if you're doing a high precision diameter for example, you probably best to stop a little bit short measure it and take the final cut as a double check. So I've finished the grooving. I'm going to take out tool number one. Put in the next tool, tool number two. Select tool number two on the DRO and I can start machining as quick as that and rough out the bore for the ER32 collet. I'll run the RPM a little bit low so we don't spray coolant all over the camera but just to give you the idea so we've just put in tool number two and we're straight into roughing putting on about a one mil deep cut a two mil on diameter setting So you can see you're just going quickly from one tool to the next. I am aware I'm going on about digital readouts on the lathe quite a lot. Um, and I, because I know that many people are not fully utilizing them. I know when I, I first heard about digital readouts way back in the 70s, I thought, well, they make a lot of sense for a milling machine for the XYZ coordinates. But why would you need one on a lathe? And eventually I was convinced that I should get one but for years I didn't fully utilize all of the tool offsets and use it like a CNC lathe 
Um, it's only been in recent years that I'm fully utilizing it. And I imagine there's plenty of other folk there in that situation. You always re resist doing something new. It's just human nature. So I'm just pointing it out here to make sure you're at least aware of it as, as an option. So I've roughed out the ER32 bore with carbide, but I always prefer to finish machine precision surfaces with high-speed steel that have been lapped with a diamond lap. I'm just a bit old school about that. I know in theory tungsten carbide will hold as good an edge, but I've just found that high grade, high cobalt, high speed steel does a better job. So many times I've put one up against the other and high speed steel wins. And tool 4 is a 45 degree bevel tool that I'm using to produce an internal center land for later use with this revolving center and machining the external chamfer for the thread. Okay, so finally tool number 5, threading. I'm not sure how much I should be talking here. I really need to concentrate. You could be witnessing a disaster. Uh, Anyway, I'll see how I go, so I'm just going to be using the set across top slide method rather than the set over top slide method, and we're going to reverse out. Nine point seven, thirty nine point five is the next cut, a bit more cutting oil, thirty nine point five. Full form plunge cutting at the moment because it's just the tip of the tool. But now I'm going to begin to use the set across top slide. So we're only cutting on one flank of the thread. 39. Oh God, what was the number? 39.75. I better, I better concentrate. Sorry, guys. I'll get back to you when I've finished. It's stressful single point threading in a lathe. This would be so much easier to thread millet, but it wouldn't fit in Thread Express anyway. The machine is just too small to take something that big through the center. Thread Express suits small to medium parts that are small to medium in length and small to medium in diameter, but it doesn't suit big parts and really long parts that need to be machined between centers. When you finish machining your part, you can put the dial indicator back in again and check that nothing has shifted. Um, it's just doing quality control, I suppose, but also reassuring you that you are not having any uh, disasters that you're unaware of. And once again, it didn't move during machining. But I did hear a couple of little soft clunks when I was boring it out, so I checked it after that stage to make sure it hadn't shifted. But the most important check is the angular contact, that it doesn't shift in an angular direction. You know, because a little shift in angular direction can be a lot out by the time you get to the other end of a spindle, for example. After a while, you learn to get a bit of a feel for it if, if it's likely to have shifted you know you might be boring and you hear a heavy thud going through the machine and um, that's because a chip has rolled sideways under the boring bar and jammed for a second that can shift your work in the, in the chuck um, but if you don't hear any thuds after a while or similar noises 
um, then you, you're more confident that it's fine and there's probably not even any need to check it after you finish machining. Well, thanks for watching that through to the end, guys. Appreciate your support. Um, please like and subscribe if you found something new useful. And let me know your thoughts in the comments. And I'll catch you next time. Stay tuned.